was not supposed to speak today, but because when the boss says, you have to do that. Very simple. So that's why I'm here. And uh, to be honest, today I'm not going to speak a lot about the, the so-called disability part or my own personal story. Today it is a story of uh, inclusiveness of the issues of the communities. And maybe in the next 15, 20 minutes, a lot of reality check. And just trying to understand that what are we doing, why are we doing, whether it is happening in the right direction. Can I have the clicker? So you know, it's been about 18 years of Goonj now, February, we will be 18. We are about 600 people, 22 states we work, best possible awards. We deal with about 3,000 tons of material. A lot of people think that we are in the business of collecting and distributing clothes. They are absolutely wrong. I'll try to correct it today a bit, although, you know, Feroz told me to convey the story of Goonj. And I am here with a different mission also, to be honest. You know, because after all these beautiful figures, the fact remains that before sleeping, if I put my hand here, honestly ask myself, I want to see 100 faces where the life is totally changed. The honest answer is very tough. And then you go to the world of conferences and PPTs and presentations, and you find that every single person claiming 100,000 lives change. And you look back and say that, is it so true that every single person is changing 100,000 lives? How come the change is not happening? So I call it the issue, you know, the story of non-issues, the non-issues which we will be discussing today and tomorrow, in any case, in this conference has actually done that, but there are a lot more. So just to give you a couple of examples, you know, before I start these slides and all. So, you know, I often ask people that if you, if you go to a private school in India, unfortunately, the private schools are called public schools here. Every third, fourth kid you find wearing glasses. If you go to a government school, a municipality school, how many of us have seen kids wearing glasses? So my question to the world is that education is hampering in this country because the teacher-student ratio is wrong, education policy is wrong, we don't have infrastructure. Or education is also hampering because the kids cannot see. Our story at Goonja, very emotional stories, but our work is hardcore logistics. We move like 3,000 tons of material from the richest cities to the poorest or the remotest part of the country. In the last 18 years of our work, I don't remember seeing any driver wearing glasses. And if you see the Indian trucks, most vulnerable in terms of temperature, heat, dust, everything. So I'm asking, accidents are happening because a dog comes on the road, or the roads are really full of corruption and bad, or accidents are also happening, the driver cannot see. These are the non-issues, but the real issues. So maybe the way the kid or the driver cannot see, many of us are not able to see those non-issues which are troubling this country, this society, this world in a much bigger way. So this is a small series you know, I do on my Facebook, uh, just to run some of these thoughts, you know, I don't think, yeah. So, you know, just, just break certain myths and maybe if we, if we correct certain way of operating, the life might, you know, start changing in a totally, totally different way. I am talking about the mandir ke bhitar aur bahar koi garib bhook se mar gaya. Sorry. Agar business plan banane se desh badal sakta, to business plan ne badal hi na diya hota aas se. How many of you are okay in Hindi? Otherwise, I'll actually read it in English, although I prefer to read it in Hindi because that's the language. That's why, you know, the text is there in English. Kabhi fursat mile to baithna, desh ke baare mein kuch baat karni hai. When you have time, let's sit down. I want to talk about the country. You know why these pictures are very important? Because all these pictures are just about 10, 15 years old. 
exactly the time when we were creating the best possible airports in Bangalore and Mumbai, 70% of your nation was living in this condition. Exactly the time when we are creating the best possible structures and all kind of urban related schemes, your rural India lives like that. Kabhi mokka mila, to patthar ke hati asman, chute putlo bhavya mandir masjid banane walo se poochunga, iske liye kya banaya aap? What have you made for him? It's a simple case of missing priorities. India is not a poor country. India has all kind of resources, right from manpower to financial to natural, whatever. But maybe our stories are totally different. Maybe our priorities are totally different. You want to change the world, improve it. Dunya badalna chahte ho, sudhar kya chahte So this is a midday meal of 400 kids. In the you know morning session, I was just sitting with these six fellows. You will be listening to them. And one thing which I was again and again telling them, you know, the, the biggest problem in India and in the other part of the world is that our benchmarking is very low. When you see 100 meters black road, you think you have arrived. When you see this kind of rice supplied to kids in the midday meal, you say we are providing midday meal. How many of us sitting here in this room can actually even allow our kids to go near this meal? We all will think that the infection will happen. When millions and millions of kids in this country and many other countries survive on this food. My question to the nation is, A, do they deserve this food and will they really grow with this food? B, is it not our responsibility as the common citizen to question? Because very few people pay taxes, every single grain of this rice is made out of the taxes paid by some honest citizens. So if you want to do something, the fact remains that we all have to talk, we all have to act. This country does not need or maybe this world does not need thinkers anymore. This word certainly, certainly needs doers. So let me just touch upon this small story of non-issues, you know. We spoke about, say, 1998, almost 18 years. We asked a very basic question. And this is a story of inclusion in our life, to be honest. We said that you talk about three basic needs. You say food, cloth, and shelter, roti, kapla, or makan. We said food is okay, a lot of people are working on it, shelter is okay, a lot of people are working on it. How come cloth has never been an issue? Why do you need a flood to be flooded with clothes? Why do you remember clothes when a disaster happens? How come it has happened that worldwide cloth has remained a charitable subject object? When you say 50% of your population do not get two meals a day, is it the problem of hunger? Tell me, is it the problem of hunger? Or we need to understand that every single person who does not get two meals a day does not have access to any damn thing on this earth. The person who does not get two meals a day does not get education, does not get health, does not get clothing. We asked if earthquake or floods are disaster, how come winters are not a disaster? Why don't we have figures of people who die or suffer due to lack of clothing in winter. So this is Habib Bhai and his blind wife, Amna Begum. In 91, I was doing my journalism, roaming around in Old Delhi, suddenly saw this rickshaw. In Hindi, it says, Police Seva Lavaris Slash Kele, which means the person who picks up unclaimed abandoned dead bodies. Full-time job of Habib Bhai and his wife was to pick up unclaimed dead bodies. Like any other metro in the world, I was recently in LA and I was really surprised to find that 45,000 people in that city of LA, in the most progress nation, are also 100% homeless. So you can imagine the situation in Delhi and many, many other cities. A lot of people migrate, come, 
and before they settle down in the slums, they go through a miserable life. Many people die because of hunger, because of cold, because of lack of attention, medicine. Habib Bhai in those days was paid 20 rupees and 2 meter of white cloth per dead body. He and his wife would go, pick up the dead body, bring it to the crematorium for all kind of systems and processes. I spent about a week with them. Early morning used to be there on the footpath to have my bed tea with them until late in the night. Two statements came up. In Hindi, obviously, I'll just translate. Habib Bhai said that in winters my work goes up and many times I have so much of work that I cannot handle it. And to my utter surprise, you know, in almost like 25 years back, every 24 hours, Habib Bhai was picking up 10 to 12 dead bodies in the range of 5 to 6 kilometers where he was able to take his rickshaw. Summers, the average used to be 4 to 5. He had a little daughter, that's my daughter, almost of the same age, called Bano, who gave the most shocking statement in Hindi. She said, that when I feel cold, I will sit with my lash. She says, when I feel cold, I hug the dead body and sleep. It does not trouble me. It does not turn around. To be honest, I was shocked the way you are. And I'm still shocked because the fact remains that the problem is still remains the same. Despite the fact that you've got the best possible awards, recognitions, so many hundreds and hundreds of forums we have spoken, clothing, neither the government nor the development sector nor the corporate sector, understand that it is an issue. It is an issue, it is a development issue. If something is so important for me, you know, with my last slide, I'll actually prove it. How come that is not important, you know, for the so-called financially poor person? So we started working on cloth. Two things we decided. A, we will make it an issue and reposition it. So the moment a person says that I am donating cloth or any other second hand material, we'll actually challenge and upfront will say that listen, boss, you do not donate you discard. If I give 1000 rupees to someone, I might call that it is a donation. If I give 10, 15 kg rice to someone, I might call it as a donation. But if I am giving something which I have already used to the core, which has become a burden on me, I want to get rid of it. With what right do I call it a donation? The only word which I can use is that I am giving it because that's the physical act of it. On the other part, you know, our material goes to the village India a very large quantity. We understood that the biggest asset of village people is their self-respect, is their dignity. You do not find baggers in the villages. Bagging is a city phenomenon. None of us who is sitting here has a right to do charity in the villages and in the slums. Because do understand that slums are not the extension of the cities, which is a you know, popular thought process because if slums are the extension of the cities, people like me and you should have gone and stayed in the slums. Slums are the extension of the villages. When you do not take care of your people in the villages, it is a migration not by choice but by compulsion. Somewhere, all of us need and the charity has to go. Charity cannot sustain, charity should not sustain. Instant relief to someone is acceptable, but it should not sustain. So we came out with a very simple initiative. It is called Cloth for Work now. So what we are trying to do, we are just, you know, this initiative is called Cloth for Work. 3,000 tons of material utensil, footwear, office furniture, school material, anything and anything and everything. I mean, at Goonj, except a shit pot, everything is acceptable. People in the communities take up their own issues, work on that. Instead of money, for six days, seven days, 15 days, every six months, they ultimately earn material. So you see these, you know, some of the pictures I'll just show you. These are the ponds. Eastern India survives on these ponds, many, many other parts of the country. Whole lot of people work on it. Absolutely local resources. If you see the last picture, you see a sari, you see a tube, you see a buffalo. 100% local wisdom, local issues, local solution. When they work on it, ultimately they are, they are rewarded with the material, which you people give 
and think that it is going in charity. Look at the shots of the road. Absolute tough terrain. You cannot even imagine roads in these kind of areas in Odisha. This is what people have created. It's a two-kilometer road, no JCB machine, no engineer, no technician, just the local wisdom. Local resources, local problem, local solution. This is how the wells are happening all across the country. And in a, if you see, a couple of things have happened. And we have been able to dignify giving. No more charity in the entire process, although we are dealing with the most charitable subject object. Second, if you see, this is the barter between two new currencies. One currency is called labor, the other currency is called material. So you see the last picture, people in that picture are actually paying back in a very big currency called labor, because that's what they have. People like us are paying them in a currency like material, because that's what we have. So it's a barter between material and labor, and money is for the logistics of it. You know, you just referred NASA. So when we were chosen as Game Changing Innovation in 2012, very beautiful sentence came up, said, that this is the genesis of a parallel economy, which is not cash based, but trash based. That's what we are trying to do with the old material. Thank you. Mangroves in Sundarbans. Just to show you the variety of work, you know, what all can happen if we try to for parallel currencies instead of just depending on money. Yeah, yeah, this is not working properly. This is a dull lake just before the Kashmir issues, you know, for the last four months it is in curfew, just, just before that. Some 160 boats, 300 people cleared almost one lakh a square meter of dull lake as part of cloth for work. This is how the relief is dignified, even relief is not given as charity. So disaster, India is a disaster prone country, we all know. And now these, this model is going to be replicated in many other countries. This is how people take up their own development work and then receive the material. Your old school material, you know, this is my important point. I'll just, uh, you know, tip on two more points. You know, we are absolutely against doing charity to the kids. Why? If I, if I look back at my childhood, when I was growing, maybe I must be about three years, three years old. The first lesson which my mom told me, and all of us will agree with that, she actually told us that whenever you go to the neighbor, your auntie, and if she gives you biscuit and toffees, because chocolates never used to be there when I was growing up, don't take it. The other thing they used to say, my mom and my father, they used to teach us the gratitude part. That even if you are taking, how do you say thank you and all that. So I'm really wondering, that how come we have made kids the victim of charity worldwide? If you have to win Miss India or Miss World, you have to talk about poor children. If you are a toy store and you want to do some CSR or some you know good job, not the real good job but the tokenism, you want a celebrity and then some 10, 15 so-called financially poor kit so that you can really give it, create certain pictures, put it on the website and sing a song on the Facebook. If the small charity free giving from a known person who is almost my relative next door if that is not acceptable, acceptable to me, how come we are actually promoting the idea of charity for the kids? Our model is very simple. We talk about reward. Tons of school material comes and goes to the kids, not as a charity. We work on the etiquette, behavior, various other issues, and then the kids are rewarded. It will take another half an hour. This is how the Anganwadis are working with the help of old toys. Very beautiful sentence came up where this you know, lady said, Pehle bachcha aata nahi tha, bachcha jata nahi. And the only difference is about 70, 80 toys, 80 toys. Why I am showing you these kind of small things? Because I personally, I'm a, I'm a strong believer that a lot of big issues have very small solutions. My last issue for today, and all of you who are working in this particular space, although I'll be talking about it tomorrow in detail, but I need to warn you about this particular issue. 2004, five. We were about six, seven years, eight years old. We raised another issue because by that time we understood that there is acute shortage of clothing. We said that every single woman across the globe
needs a piece of cloth. Very taboo issue. It is called sanitary pad. We don't want to talk about it. Go to the market, buy the best possible tampons, cups, sanitary pad. The chemist or the shopkeeper will start wrapping, you know, in a black polythene or in a newspaper. You can roam around with that black polythene. Everybody knows what is there in it, but you'll always hide it. We said that in a nation in the world, if you do not have enough to wear, from where how you bring this piece of cloth? Can you imagine the 2004 5, just about 10 11 years? If you would have gone on Google like me, you're talking about inclusion today. And you would have typed sanitary pad, sanitary napkin, any other you know, synonym of this. Not even a single major research was available in India. No problem statement, no solution. And we were absolutely shocked because we said that this is the world of self help group, microfinance about a million Anganwadis. Everywhere you target a woman, you talk to a woman. How come we never spoke about it? When we didn't find evidence, we started traveling across the country. And what we found is exactly true, 100% as it is, even today, not only in India, but half the world. They use the dirtiest piece of cloth because for them it's the dirt. They wash it. They cannot dry it in sunlight because of obvious reasons. Washing itself is a big problem because now the life depends on public taps. Public taps in the name of public convenience is always put up at a public place. With dust, moisture, they wear it again. You have two to three women in the family, the cycles are different, they are sharing the same piece of cloth. Often it is shared in the village. Millions is a very small number, you know, when we start talking about these issues. We must only and only talk about billions. These women are actually using sand, ash, jute bags, rugs, rags, newspaper, dry grass, rice husk, plastic sheet, use sanitary pad to cow dung. Anything and everything which can absorb, which can stop is used as a sanitary pad. We have cases where a lady used a piece of blouse, typical Indian wear, which had a hook, she died of fitness. We found a case where a centipede entered, the lady died. Largest number, biggest number of uterus removal, the biggest health racket. You know, India has two kinds of health racket, the corporate hospitals. The biggest health racket is the baby birth because no normal baby happens, only cesarean happens because that's where the bill happens. In the, in the rural part, in the small town part, the biggest health racket is removal of uterus. And the biggest cause for that is this. The moment an infection happens, you are told that you have cervical cancer or the cancer will come, will happen exactly at the child bearing age your uterus is removed. Now my question is very simple. Tomorrow maybe we will you know, share some stories on this also. If I am a so called debled person, 70% of Indian women and women you know, from across the globe, if they are going through this particular problem during menses, how many of us have actually thought about the same issue for the so-called disabled communities? Anand one in Maharashtra, which often we all think is the, is the hub or is the best possible place for the leprosy patients, also has hundreds and hundreds of disabled people with all kinds of disabilities. When we went there and when we started talking about it, because it's a, it's a very beautiful close relationship we share with Anand One, it's like a family relationship, absolutely shocking stories start coming in. So my request to you and we'll be more than happy as Goonj to work with all of you because we don't know much about many, many other disabilities, but there are certain problems which are the common problem. So please understand that even when you talk about inclusion and you see disability as you know, inclusion within disability itself. There are hundreds of issues which need to be included. Whether we talk about the issue of clothing, we talk about the issue of dignity, or we talk about the issue of sanitary pad or menstrual hygiene. This is what we do. We just create it, you know, with a small piece of cloth. You can see it at our, I think, you know, there's the booth where that's, that's where you can see it. It's reusable, it's so-called recycled cloth, cheapest possible sanitary pad. 
but this is just one small solution we actually need thousands of different kind of solutions which can really scale up much more for us it is not a product as a tool to initiate a community dialogue and let me just come to the last thing you know this you can see outside the stall is there i know no one has indian money right now so no one can buy so just go enjoy see that and buy it sometime later so this is like you know for us it's a, it's a tool for social change the old material i mean that's what we are trying to do and i ignored it it is a big you know bridge between the urban and rural india and different part of you know the societies in the country and the word, the best thing which we think is that we are able to tell the massive potential people have it's not what it's not one of those top down approach because where people like us the decision makers the government the policy makers the corporates or ngos will go and say that this is the work which you are needed which is needed it is not like pradhan mantri gram sadak yojana where you know a scheme comes and say that every single village will have a road this initiative is something where people are decision makers they choose their own problems and they solve it this is the macro impact this is the micro thing my last two three pictures which i am trying and all of us are trying in our presentations for the last 15 years they're not able to change even a single picture because we understand that things are not changed this is an exercise with you for next 2 minutes or maybe a minute when you see this kid it's a very common picture in the presentations stories in reality and because we have a status you know accepted the status quo many times it actually does not bother us but we all are very very sensitive people so i just want to ask one thing when you see this kid what is that first word sentence that comes in your mind what do you relate with this kid how do you react to this situation of kid what do you feel come up it's just the last one minute this is just a story that how small things matter how the perception changes and how the non issues matter please i relate hunger to this kid what else poverty poverty hopelessness distress speak up but i don't repeat it speak up cold anything else sorrow shame opportunity he is waiting for someone sorry one of many okay change the world you improve it first okay anything else so the fact remains that if i leave all of you for maybe next 5 minutes with this picture almost every single negative word in your vocabulary will come out this one what do you say hopeless shivering cold hungry he might be poor but every single other negative word really goes out here you know in hindi we say bechargi and you know this is like confidence this is second picture you will not even go to this person and stand next to him and you'll see a powerful youth of india in a jeans and a red t-shirt this person i often tell people that if you go to the village will you stay with him is he the right person to talk about you know the village or the economy and all and suddenly you call him uncle you call him kaka and somewhere i don't know from where a piece of cloth also brings wisdom you will not talk to him about the village and he is the right person to talk to so that's the small initiative we all have taken and it is growing as a movement thank you very much